Hi, my name is Neil, and I just finished building an eight-foot neck stone. All right, and I'm putting the conclusions up here right at the front because this is not uh, for entertainment value, really. I'm not putting sound effects and, and anything. Uh, this is really just for a, a very specific audience. Either you just got a next dome in the summer of 2023, and you might want to uh, see the things you, you, you might be, have some confusion over, uh, or you're considering whether to buy one, and you're wondering like if it's really that much of a mess you know, from stuff that maybe was a problem five years ago. All right, so it took me about three weeks. And that's kind of typical, you know, a couple hours a day, like after work, you know, it's probably what most people do. But it's probably 10 or 12 hours total. Um, so not, not too bad with that. And it's been running, I've been running it for about a week, doing automated uh, stuff, and uh, it, it works like a charm. Okay, so overall, I'm, I'm quite happy. Uh, it's, it's, I knew that it wasn't a turnkey sort of system, that, that there's a little bit of a do-it-yourself element here to this, and uh, that's okay. Uh, I'm a lot better off than if I bought one that was three times as much. Uh, you know, so anyway. Um, the uh, base and the dome uh, pretty much went according to instructions, actually getting what you know looks like an observatory there. Um, People have historically had a lot of trouble with the holes not lining up, and I don't know if they line up better now or whether people are just uh, awfully eager with their drill, um, but I didn't have to uh, uh, drill any new holes, okay? And I wanted to sometimes, but if you really stick with it, it all fits together, okay? So if you just go, oh, that doesn't line up, and you just start drilling new holes everywhere, you're gonna end up with a, a potato, okay? So uh, in, in the summer of 2023, anyway, it goes together without uh, re, uh, drilling new holes. Um, there was uh, one hole that was clearly, one hole on each base panel that was clearly uh, not drilled the right size. Okay, but there was there was nothing in the wrong place. Um, the rotation system, the new rotation system, that was the toughest part for me. It took up a lot of time because when I got the package, uh, there actually weren't any instructions out for the new system. All right, so there's a lot of confusion there. Uh, there are instructions out now, so it shouldn't be shouldn't take you half as long. But even so, it's it's uh, uh, kind of a, there's still a few hiccups with it. Um, so you might want to see all the mistakes I made trying to get that together. Um, I didn't get um, hold down brackets. Uh, there's these new brackets with the new track that that apparently keep the roof from uh, ever flying off. Uh, I'm sure I'll work to figure that out uh, getting those. Uh, but uh, that was really the only thing that was missing other than a few a few washers. No big deal. Um, let's see, there's also importantly with the new system uh, of the seven beams, there are four of them that have an extra hole. Now not having instructions, I had no idea like what the deal was with that. So I probably put those in the wrong place. That extra hole is for the hold down bracket that I don't have anyway. Um, not, not a huge deal. What I'll have to do probably, unless I got really lucky and put them in the right places, is, is just re-drill uh, re -drill, uh, where the hole should be in the beam that is in the right location for it. Um, I did find that the track was too tight. Um, maybe it's the weather, but I could get it in. So there's four straight tracks, but they bend to make a big circle on the inside with, uh, with holes in it for the, the teeth of the rotator. And I could get it in but it was where they, where they meet, how would we do this? Where they meet, it was really, really tight. And that caused some uh, bowing around it. So I had to do some sanding there. All right, uh, the rain sensor was miswired. So that one, you're not expecting that really. Um, so if your rain sensor doesn't, <clears throat> doesn't work right off the bat, then uh, I've got all of the pictures and, and stuff for you there on what should go where. I had a little confusion over the shutter. I probably still do a little bit, but it, it, it works. Um, so I guess I'll let that go. Uh, so those, th those are what the next hour is talking about. If nothing else, um, I thought that the instructions that come with it uh, have about half as many pictures as they should probably have. Um, so with this hour of video, you have every piece of this observatory filmed at some point or another from every single angle. Um, so. Even if you don't have the problems I have, you might, you might find it. If you just need pictures of something, uh, you can probably find it here because my system is, is up and running now 
and works. And so I'm going to put in the comments here the timing of these different elements, uh, so you can you can skip right to it if you need to. Um, so here we go. Hey there, I'm Neil, and I'm going to be putting together a next dome, eight foot uh, observatory, uh, in the summer of 2023. Now there's a several step-by-step -step videos out there where people have documented this, and I'm not gonna uh, recreate one of those. Really, what I'm gonna do is, is only point out the things, if there are, which I imagine there are, but the things that are confusing, uh, um, or uh, it's missing parts, something I had to fabricate, um, because that's really uh, what is probably gonna be the most useful to somebody, is if there are any tricks to this. So, so far, uh, so good. Uh, I have laid out the parts here and I have started putting together the, the base. Uh, not too much to that. Uh, I'm kind of using that fountain there as a support uh, until I really get going. And I've organized all the bolts and nuts and stuff like that. The instructions, uh, they're fine so far. This is my current homemade setup. Uh, it is the flimsiest uh, uh, level of uh, uh, plywood that you can buy and then some two by fours to sort of make a truss. Uh, very flimsy material but the, you know if you're if you're in engineering when you get a, a triangle all of a sudden everything gets very uh, firm and so this has worked for me but it really doesn't keep up with the, the, the heat and the, uh, the monsoons around here in Phoenix. Okay, so it's, it's uh, drafty, okay, kind of wobbly, and spider webs, uh, dusty, uh, dusty telescope. I've got a computer in here running Nina, and then I control that with a remote desktop uh, inside. Um, so, so yeah, my standards are not uh, OCD. I just want this thing to work. So anything that is not really troubling to me with the next dome, I'm not going to make a video about. It's really going to be the, the sort of got, head scratching gotchas that maybe I can save some time uh, for the next person. All right, so the, the next thing for me to do is to really measure a circle here and start firming up the foundation. And I'll tell you when I run into a problem. All right, so it seems like a pretty good time to check in. Uh, because I've pretty much finished the first uh, instruction package uh, packet, which is getting the base together. Okay, so not no big uh, tricks there. Let me tell you a few things I figured out. All right, so this is about what it looks like. Starting at the bottom up, the instructions weren't very clear on whether these uh, uh, mounting tabs go on the inside or the outside. Uh, I, I think it looks better on the inside, and I don't think it makes m much of a difference. So I just went with the inside. Um, these, uh, these all uh, went together pretty well. The, uh, you put the two bottom, the, the middle and the bottom bolt in first, and then you finish it up with, uh, with these here that will have the uh, roller on it. So this was the uh, first issue I ran into. Okay, these rollers went in very nicely, okay, and they use the uh, a larger diameter bolt. This is a long one. This is a medium-sized one that goes through here. Um, if you crank these down all the way, they'll freeze up, so that's not what you want. Uh, so bolt them, crank them down to, so that you know that you're not just stuck halfway on the thread, and then back off until they uh, pretty, spin pretty freely. I think that's going to be what you want to do there. When I started to do these... I found that I had seven of these bolts and seven of the nuts, but I did not have any more of these uh, neoprene backed washers. Okay, so that, it, they could just be in some bag I haven't found yet, um, but I'm, there is a chance that if you got this airdropped by a C-17 to an island in the Pacific, that you might uh, end up short on a, a washer or two or seven. Um, but that was no, to 99% of people, that's no issue to, to go a mile and, and, and buy some washers. But I was scratching my head a little bit because there was one red flag 
that I didn't have the right, uh, that I didn't have the washers I needed, which I don't expect. And then this wouldn't go through either. It looks like the hole was about the size of the other ones, which are a smaller diameter. So now I had two things. I didn't have the washers and the bolt didn't seem to go through. So that really made me think three or four times, do I have this right? But it has to be this size bolt because if I use the smaller bolt, the uh, this wouldn't like fit tightly. Um, so I'm pretty confident that that's what I was just did. It was missing some washers and I had to enlarge the hole a little bit. I'll show you over here. It looks like on, on the right side of the panels, if you're facing it from the outside, the hole is, is correct. It'll go through. But pretty much on the left side of every panel, the hole is not the right size. So I just took a drill and uh, kind of enlarged it a little bit. But you know, that's something else. Whenever you pull that drill out to redrill, drill a new hole or make something bigger, really check three times that, that, you know, measure three times, cut once, right? But that's gotta be it. It's gotta be this bolt and it's just gotta get through there. Uh, generally though, when I have had, I've had some tight spots with these two where once you get one in, the other one doesn't quite line up. Um, but I just just keep working it and force it because uh, you don't want to get everything kind of loose by just doing the easy fix with a drill on it on every single thing that doesn't quite line up. Uh, really, if it you know the temperatures here, it's a uh, you know 115 things are going to expand a little bit, um, but for the most part, I've been able to eventually get everything together. I haven't needed any help yet. Uh, I would say that. If I had somebody here helping me the whole time, things would be 20% easier. Uh, so I'm not gonna call in any favors on that. I'm just gonna, gonna make it 20% harder and, and do as much as I can myself. The only other thing I can think of is the, the door here. Right now it's a little uh, rickety, but the, the structure itself isn't, isn't screwed in yet. So I don't think that's gonna be any issue. That'll firm up when the, the structural elements sort of come together. There weren't, there was a little bit left to the imagination on the uh, door handle. Uh, the pictures were really zoomed in. You couldn't really see exactly whether you were looking from the inside or the outside. But at the end of the day, there was only one way to, to put it together. Uh, and just in case it helps you, you can see a, a little bit more zoomed out than the instructions have. Um, but there's only one way to put it together and then it comes together, no big, uh, no big mark, um, uh, bad grades for that. Uh, I did get stuck for a little bit. These two screws that hold this spinning thing in, uh, there was no hole for it. So of course that made me think, you know, they put all these holes in everything. Do they really, you know, am I really missing where this is supposed to go? But th that's gotta be it. You just take a, a very small drill bit and get a little starter hole for those screws and they, they go right in. Okay, so I think that pretty much sums up packet one of assembly. Uh, I told you the things that, that kind of slowed me down for a little bit. I think I got it resolved. Um, I'm at about the three, three and a half hour mark. Okay, so this is, I'm gonna call this about four hours by the time I put the rest of those, the uh, little wheels on that require a little bit of, of drilling that plastic uh, hole out a little bit more. So give it another half hour for that. One thing I forgot to mention is I noticed on packing that there's a, a bottom hole, a middle hole, and some of the bars have two holes up on top. Some do not. Some do. The instructions said nothing about that. So I was, I initially thought, well, you know, they put some holes there accidentally, whatever, didn't hurt it. They're not going to throw it away. Um, but now I'm starting to think that, that maybe those with the extra hole are supposed to go someplace specific to mount the, uh, the, the shutter motor or, or something like that. And I'm going to end up getting to that point and have to uh, swap out uh, some of these bars, move them around, which will suck. Because the instructions do not say anything about 
uh, uh, putting some of the special uh, support bars in a certain place. But I think that's going to catch up with me. Um, so anyway, I'll let you know when it does. Next is packet two, the uh, dome assembly. All right, so here's where I'm at with the uh, dome. This is probably about t two hours into it. The times are kind of hard because it's it's uh, over well over 110 here. So this is like 10 minutes at a time, go do something else until I'm chilly inside and come back out. Uh, so this is kind of a broad estimate. Uh, these, uh, would I also did it by myself, it would have been maybe 30% easier with another person. Um, these, it would have been very tempting to get the drill out because you'll, you'll put one in and then this one won't quite line up. You force it in and uh, then, then one will seem uh, very off. Um, but that's where it would be a real mistake, I think, to just start drilling uh, because I think this thing is a very rigid structure and it's going to be perfectly circular. And if, if, you know, I found by taking this, putting it on this side, pushing here, pulling there, putting it upside down, eventually it clicks right into place and the bolts line up. And I think that's, that's how you've got to do it if you want this thing to be structurally sound and clicked into its perfect uh, circular sort of footprint. All right, so I'm pretty much done with the dome. Um, I have not put the, haven't put the, the shutter on because it's, it's gonna be just me and my wife uh, putting it onto the top. And it's kind of pushing the weight limit uh, for the two of us. And I think I can just do that just as easily once it's on. No real surprises here. Um, I, uh, everything was drilled correctly, the instructions were fine. All right, so I think I'm pretty much done with the dome. Uh, other than what I talked about before, um, I had to put the slit on. I think in hindsight, I would have done that before. Uh, you have to get on a step ladder to get the bolts through the, the second track, second set of tracks and stuff. And really, uh, even, even with this, it wouldn't be pushing the limit uh, of my wife to uh, hold her half and lift it up over the telescope that's already inside. I think the main confusion I've had today is, is with the, uh, the shutter itself. I've really gone back and forth on whether I have this in backwards or one piece is backwards. Um, and that happens when I got to, when I got to the, the stop. Okay, this thing here. Now I thought this was just packaging trash. Uh, so uh, don't throw that out. Uh, the, the confusion is the, in the pictures and in the instructions, neither end has this, this rubber uh, seal here. And so it's, it's kind of hard to tell which end is which. In one picture, I definitely confirmed that the, the uh, metal stop is on the outside edge, okay? And then in another picture, I was able to confirm that, that this is what this edge looks like, is this here. Um, but it took me a while, and the, and the reason I kept questioning myself is because, well, I've still got some adjusting to do on these, I guess. So for one thing, what does this seal do? There's nothing to seal here. And then when it's in the, when it's in the closed position, there's still nothing to seal really. Uh, I guess maybe if you were getting sideways rain this way, but it still doesn't really seal anything. So I would say better pictures uh, of, of the dome so that we know exactly which way it's going. Oh, but I was saying, like this looks fine, but it seems like this would be where you would have a rubber seal, if anywhere. And lastly, the plastic stop, 
it kind of doesn't seem in keeping with the overall quality of everything else. It just, you just kind of shove it in here. It seems like it's something that would just fall out. I don't know why there's not like just something that you bolt here or something that some bracket that comes out of this screw. Cause this, this seems like it, you know, you hit it a couple times the wrong way and it's just gonna fall right out. And uh, that set of bolts there come very close to, to hitting this, unless you kind of tweak this just by sliding it left and right. I don't know. I'm still not 100% sure that this is, this is right. It's certainly not adjusted on the track yet quite right, but I'm gonna push ahead and see, see what comes next. And like I said before, I really haven't tightened down any bolts because I really want to pretty much get this all together uh, before, uh, before locking anything in. And along those lines, when, when you get the shutter in, the, the track you've installed, then you can install, install back track. Uh, and it, it really feels like when you're in there that these things are too close and they're not gonna, uh, they're not gonna slide in. So you need to shave off a little bit. But I didn't, and by loosening everything enough, I, I got it in there. So again, I think a lot of people get into trouble just uh, cutting and, and drilling new holes. And then that leads to problems down the line when it's not in the exact shape that it's supposed to be. Because so far, the only drilling I've had to do was on the foundation. And it was at the top of this uh, where that hole is not on the top left is not big enough for the bolt that holds uh, one of the wheels uh, to get through. Um, so the next instru instruction list on the website that I pull up is the, uh, the ring assembly. So that was a little bit of a head scratcher because I didn't see a whole new set of wheels and all that. Uh, and it, it didn't take me too long, I guess, to figure out that I don't have a ring assembly. The ring assembly instructions don't apply if you have if you've bought the the uh, the foundation. The ring assembly is like if you're just putting it on a hole in a in an existing uh, structure. Okay, so we'll skip that one. I think the uh, the next one's either the the shutter uh, motor or the the uh, dome motor. We'll see, and that should shake out uh, anything that's not in the right place. We'll see you then. All right, so here's where we're at today. A little bit of a challenge here. The next thing up was the dome rotation kit. Okay, so I went opening up boxes that I hadn't been to yet. Uh, I see all the stuff I'm expecting, except I'm missing the double-sided tape and the, uh, the teeth, the, the strip of teeth that go up against the wall. So I looked all over the place, everywhere that I'd opened anything, uh, three times. And I was just about crafting the email to next to him, like, hey, I don't think I could have lost this. I think, I think uh, maybe it didn't get in the shipment. Uh, and then I was looking at these things, and I guess in my head I thought they were part of another step because they didn't look like they had anything to do with this at all. But it looks like the rotation kit has been completely uh, upgraded, okay, which is a good thing, but the instructions have no indication of that, no note. So a small complaint on this one that it took quite a while of, of uh, getting around and I don't have any instructions for it. Um, so basically it seems like an, a, an upgrade though. The, the whole double-sided tape thing and then like a ribbon of plastic teeth that you kind of push on firmly, uh, that, didn't, that seemed like a little bit of a weak spot, so good on them. Uh, I would have liked some indication of that. You know, this is a small company, it, it seems, and if if the, the guy spends three days a month rewriting manuals, then, you know, there's already a six month delivery time, so six times four times three, you can add that on to everybody's delivery, so I understand. I saw on a Facebook group that someone else got these and didn't know what to do with them, and I put mine on upside down. They had emailed the company and and they're the other way because um, there's a lip here that apparently some sort of 
bracket comes can come off of here and then a little wheel goes in the lip which should be up here I had initially thought that it didn't really matter because I didn't get those brackets um, and And you can see that even if I flip this around, the holes will be in the same place. So it didn't matter in that way, in that regard. However, however, now that I'm, I'm uh, trying to get the track really uh, tuned in, uh, there's a little bit of an up and a down that's outside of the tolerances. Uh, there's a hex screw here, you can move the wheel up and down but that doesn't help you if, if, it, if this waves up and down. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take these off and flip them because if I need to start like expanding holes a little bit to make it fit, then it won't be reversible. I won't be able to flip it later. Uh, and I may need to flip it. I'm gonna go ahead and flip them now. But All right, so here's where we're at now. Uh, it's the next day, I pretty much spent yesterday uh, working on what I just talked about and uh, I'm still kind of working on it. I didn't you know, it's Kind of hot out. I didn't spend 12 hours working on it. But anyway, I I Flipped the rails. Okay, that was pretty easy. It's a tight fit, but you can you can snap them all in without any uh, drilling new holes, but then When I got to that point uh, these hang down lower now that it's flipped all right and they were going to run into the, the box here or especially the sensor um, so I had to I had to move this down all right so since I was going to drill new holes anyway I went back to this this issue and uh, instead of the bracket just actually get it to go straight through um, but this this is the hole that it comes with uh, and so even if you put it at the top there's absolutely no way to have this mounted that high uh, without this, uh, the box running into the, into the new rail. Okay, so I just don't see how you could do it. So I drilled a new hole, and then now I've got a straight through connection. Um, uh, and then I drilled new holes here. The problem now is for this, for the teeth here to now go in, this is really adjusted at the very top of where it can be, where it can go. If it goes any higher, the uh, the hex bolt that goes through won't uh, won't grab the the actual motor shaft. But that's okay. Uh, but the the actual functional problem now is that there's not much tolerance in here, up or down, and the rail does have a little bit of up or down to it. So right now you can see it's kind of hitting the top and if I go around enough with it it will uh, it, it will either go down into the center or it'll it'll be too high and, and uh, come out of the track uh, another thing with this setup anyway I'm having okay luck with the uh, charging things hitting but you can't rotate the dome if I rotate the dome with this down then these will, these will drag on the thing and eventually probably get pulled off. But that's okay as long as your method is always to open the dome, open the shutter before rotating it. But you don't want to forget that. Uh, but anyway, so as I, I rotated the whole dome around and I noted where, it go, where, the, where the, uh, the rail is too high and it pops out. All right, so between here and here, it was running too high. Um, and right in the middle is where these come together. So you can even see in there that it's, it's a pretty good crack here and then really jammed together there. So the real fix would be to, to get, the, get these things perfectly squared, the, the new rail. So that's what I'm chewing on now. Okay, so here's, here's what I'm trying. Uh, this is where the track joins, and as I pointed out earlier, it's really tight, hard to get in there, and it's really jammed up on the top, and it's got a little bit of a gap on the bottom, and I think that's making these bow out a little bit. So what I've been doing is taking out just two bolts and 
pull this out and I'm sanding down the male part a little bit. Uh, this interlock isn't really structural as far as I can tell because you've got these two bolts very close to it. Uh, and so now I've given it a little bit of uh, wiggle room. It still, still touches, um, but I think when the weather is cooler and things contract, it's, it's not going to leave a huge gap here or anything. So I got one more of those to do and then I'll see if, uh, if the track is a little bit less uh, bound up. Okay, so I think I'm on the right track. Um, giving myself a little bit of a gap here, and the new instructions that just came out said it should be one to two millimeters, so I'm still uh, tighter than that. But taking that out, I think, has taken the uh, up-down sort of motion uh, deformity out of the track. Uh, the next challenge I had was, okay, so this, this sprocket is adjustable slightly up and down, um, but I found that uh, the sensor, the magnetic sensor was on top here. And if I put it all the way until the sensor touches, then this needs to go up until it comes off of the, off of the axle to get to, to match, to match, uh, match the holes. So there's just, there wasn't enough adjustment with the sprocket uh, with, with this sitting here, the magnetic sensor sitting here. So what I did is I, I moved it to the back and made sure that there were no, uh, I, took, I took the cover off to make sure that putting new uh, screws through there wouldn't run into the circuit board or anything. And so now I can put this up to where the sprocket adjusts comfortably into the holes. But you can see there's no room there uh, like that for the uh, magnetic sensor. Um, so I'll have to adjust the, the counterpart, put that someplace uh, where it, it matches up close enough to this. But otherwise, yeah, otherwise we still have some problems, I guess. So anyway, uh, work sometimes where it doesn't work the other time, but we're getting closer and uh, I'll let you know what happens next. All right, well, still, still at it. have a few, a couple things to mention. Um, so what I did is I went back and I, I uh, expanded the gaps between the track. I think the uh, things got even better. Um, I pulled, uh, I started with a file that was going really slow. Then I had the bright idea to get a Dremel with a, a, just like the, a, a rod with the, like the diamond stuff on the end, thinking that I would just route it right out. Um, but that is a bad idea because it just melts as it goes and then melts together. Um, so don't do that. Uh, what, what works pretty good was uh, just a Dremel with this on it and just kind of, you know, get some of the material away and now now it's 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 uh it's loose enough here that that's definitely not going to cause me any binding all right so then i found that when i when i operate this uh it's not there's not an up and down with the track but the actual gear is a little tilted so it'll be really low here and then by the time it leaves it's, uh, it's pushing the upper end. So the problem now is that this is not level. I mounted it assuming that the brace would, uh, you know, if this is level, then the top would be level. But I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little bit of a warp to the brace itself. Um, so if I, I could have, this would have been fixed easily enough just mounting it making sure that the, the sprocket was level. Um, but I'm not gonna like try and remount it now. I'm done drilling holes. Um, so I'm gonna take this off and just actually try and uh, bend, bend the, the, uh, the frame itself so that it's, it's square in all directions. And then hopefully that'll be pretty much it. All right, so I think I'm just about done. Um, after 
putting in better gaps uh, between the rails. Uh, things were better, okay? Um, I could run the, uh, the dome both ways without it, get, it popping off a track. Um, but it was still, the teeth were still running a little low in the groove and they, they, they would hit bind for just a little bit and then pop in. Um, I don't mind the sound, but that tells me it's close to uh, getting off track. Um, so what I did is I, I got back to the, to the Dremel here and just kind of expanded these down just a teeny bit. And now it's uh, quite smooth. Um, I don't think expanding it, you know, I'm very reluctant to just start drilling to make my life easier. Um, but uh, in this case, I think I was out of options. And so just expanding this a little bit, you see that it's not structurally going to make much of any difference. Um, most of them, most of the holes needed a little bit of expansion down below. So that would tell you uh, on iteration one that what I simply need to do is lift this up to reduce the number of, of teeth that, that need, uh, need drilling out. But, I mean, here's the problem. There's no more room to go. If I come up any more with this, it pops off of the, of the uh, axis there, the axle in the middle. Um, and I can't, I, I, there's no way I could have re-drilled this any higher to accommodate it, because you can see it's just like right there. Uh, the, the box itself is as high as it can go. Um, so it's, it's uh, that, that may be on me, uh, but it really seems like the tolerances there are, uh, uh, leave, it, leave it where it's almost on a, not adjustable. But all's well, it ends well. All right, so I'm about an hour into this, and I thought it was going really smooth. Um, the, uh, but the first deviation I ran into the instructions. The instructions, when you put, put the track in, uh, it says that there's an extension. I forget what they call it, but there's an extension thing here. So you, you change out your old uh, screw uh, and you put that on there. And then it says do the same uh, up here. Okay, but the one they sent me is actually longer and it has a third one. Okay, so that's great. It can only help. Pretty easy to figure out what's going on there. It's gonna have three uh, anchor points instead of the two that are in the instructions, no problem. Here's where I'm stuck now. This is the inside bolt of the track that the, uh, the wheels of the shutter go into on the outside. And it's, it's, there's no room here. I can't, I can't get this track in because the, it hits the bolt here. On the instructions, uh, it very clearly shows this area and there's no, there's no hole or bolt uh, nut for the tracks coming through. So I think that might have, I've seen some of the older models where it, maybe there's not a track, but it looks more like actual wheels that, that run on something. Uh, and so that's maybe what they're expecting here. But I bought all of this at the same time. It's not like I have an older mo model and then tried to upgrade something, some new part. They sent me this all in one package. And I'm, I don't think this is just me misreading the instructions. This is, this is my problem. Uh, it's, it's just this bolt doesn't allow that. Okay, so fortunately that didn't turn out to be too much of a problem actually. Okay, so what I did is I, get, I raised the motor, get that out of the way. Then I took the bolt off, the inside uh, nut here, uh, for the outside track. And then with that out of the way, I was able to get this uh, screwed in and aligned. And then it gave me enough room to go back and, and, uh, and clamp this down. And then when you actually run it, uh, well, you can trust me, nothing here. It actually does bump this a little bit, but I guess I'm not worried about that. It, it makes it past it without really jamming up. It's a little weird here, the track, it almost seems like they needed a fourth one. So the, the track kind of bows, um, but if it, if it works, it works. The next thing was to go looking for the, uh, the stick-on close and open magnetic sensors. Uh, and they, they were actually kind of shoved down in here. So if you're looking for those, that's kind of where they put them. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, so the only thing I've done today is installed the 
installed this, the rain sensor. Um, pretty straightforward installation. The drivers and all are, are already were already done, but I'm not I'm not having any luck with it. It says it's unsafe conditions. Um, it shouldn't be a, a a light sensor, so that's what I thought for a second. But I don't think this thing is is made for not opening because the sun's up. And it, it is cloudy, but it's it's not a cloud sensor. So I'm I'm not sure what the deal with that is. Some people have had uh, reported that the wire it's miswired inside in the in the beaver circuitry. But I'm not going to tear into that just yet. I'm going to maybe wait till the night and see if it works or try and plug it you know just do some basic stuff first um, after that hopefully i'm into just getting the geometry of the telescope set and i'm not gonna drag you through all that that's gonna be different for for everybody um, so hopefully i'm in the home stretch of of the uh, structural stuff getting this together all right so i've been troubleshooting the rain sensor. It always shows as unsafe that it's raining. Um, the sensor itself is working. You can tell there's a, uh, if you sprinkle water on it, there's a little green LED that comes on. Uh, it's just saying internally, it knows when it's raining and not, but it's not getting back to the, uh, through the cable to the uh, rotator. So you get online, I was reading, whenever I say I'm reading, it's the We Love Our Next Dome Observatories uh, use, uh, user group on Facebook. And there's all these threads about stuff that comes from the factory that's miswired. Um, so now, you know, I'm going through the, uh, this color goes to that color, this is the, that, the ground, the voltage, the, the relay signal. Um, they change the colors of the wire from model to model, but uh, what I found, the fundamental problem I had, is you open this up, and this is the way it should be. The red is a, a positive voltage. The green needs to trace back, whatever combination of wires you have, the green traces back to the ground on the board, on the rotator board. And then the white is the, what is it, RS11, or it, it's the the, uh, the rain signal line. Um, the white wire you're looking at and mine went into the same hole as the green on the left. So the left two screws are the actual relay that, that closes and opens depending on whether it's raining or not. So if they're both just attached to one side of the relay, you're not going to get any signal. It, it looks like the relay is always closed. So you're going to always get a, its raining signal. Um, so that's a, a little bit of a party foul uh, here. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm pretty understanding of, uh, you know, this is a do-it-yourself project, but uh, you know, you do all the troubleshooting with, uh, uh, you know, is, the, is, the, is there a crack in the wire? Is the firmware up to date? Is it Nina, which is what I'm using? Something in that's not set right. Really, the last thing on your list that you look for is I need to open up the electronics and find wires that are going to the wrong place. But it seems like that happens with the rain sensor uh, quite a bit. And, and that would be, that's a, like I say, that's a party foul. You know, that happens maybe once and... and and you get that fixed. You know, because if I wire this the wrong way and like burn out the whole $1,200 rotator, it's probably not covered uh, under the warranty, right? Uh, because you, but that's what the understanding that you shouldn't ever be like opening up the electronics and trying different wiring patterns in modern electronics. Um, but that's what you, you have to do with this. Um, so I think, I think we're looking good now. I set this face down when I turned the phone around and it got like an erroneous, uh, uh, rain like the the, uh, the light came on and the shutter closed so I think we're in so I think we're in business now and I just now just need to uh, to put this all back together and then put the the rotator box back together it's not stuff you would expect to do even if you're pretty accepting of a, a, a do-it-yourself sort of project all right, see you next time. All right, so let's catch up. It's been a few days. Uh, the last two or three days have pretty much been getting this thing perfectly round and level. 
Uh, I didn't think leveling would be much of an issue because it's on a like a pool deck, but uh, actually I guess there's some built-in tilt there for drainage. Um, so I had actually uh, to uh, to really do a bit of leveling. Uh, the round part, that's my fault. You know, I think I explained that I didn't draw a circle because I wanted to build this around the telescope. You can't really do a radius from the center if the telescope legs are all there. Um, so uh, to me, it was it was a couple days in hindsight, just draw the circle and, and uh, do it. So I think either way, though, you're looking at a couple hours uh, to really get this thing squared in because uh, it's very three-dimensional. 